At 25 years old, I found myself single, $100,000 in student loan debt, and cocktailing at a strip club. Now, in case you're wondering if that was my plan, the answer is absolutely not. I moved to Atlanta in 2005 from Cleveland, Ohio, expecting the American dream. I was going to go to grad school, get a master's degree in nonprofit management, and take over the do-gooder world. So you can imagine my surprise when I got here, got into school, got into a great relationship, had a wonderful apartment, and eight months after graduation, I still wasn't able to find a job. And I lost my girlfriend and my apartment, everything that made me feel like me. It became a situation where I was desperate and depressed. The desperation is what led me to the strip club, but the depression is what led me to try to seek an answer. And what I found is that I was one of 100,000, more than 100,000 young people who were going through what Abby Wilner coined as a quarter life crisis. Now she coined this phrase as the period of anxiety and questioning that often accompanies adulthood. But what I found during my own personal, very personal experience is that the quarter life crisis is really about your thoughts and feelings about success, right? So if we think about success as having three main pillars, one would be money, two would be relationships, and three would be status. The quarter life crisis is an epic breakdown of all three of those things when it comes to money. Today's quarter lifer unemployment rate is twice the national average. Beyond that, we have more student loan debt and lower prospects of getting a job than any other generation in history. Relationships. The average age of marriage for the quarter lifer is 27 years old versus 21 50 years ago. And status wise, we are changing jobs anywhere between seven to eight times by the time we're 32 years old. So you can only imagine how much stress and anxiety that puts on a person. You've done all the things you were supposed to do. You got the degree. You delayed having kids. You delayed marriage. And you still end up in an empty apartment with nothing. And before I finish, I do want to address the critics, if you will. Those that would seek to compare the midlife crisis to the quarter life crisis and then say that one is invalid, namely the quarter life crisis. In all honesty, the midlife crisis and the quarter life crisis are almost like mirror images of each other. On the one hand, you have your quarter lifers who are struggling so hard to, to be successful that they don't even try to find themselves. And then you have your midlife crisis where people are trying so hard to find themselves that they don't want to be successful anymore by society's traditional standards. And I really feel that it's in the juxtaposition of both of these kind of ideas that you really find freedom from either one. So in my situation, I found that it was because I was trying so hard to be something that I wasn't able to be someone. And that's really the answer. Who do you want to be versus what do you want to be? And what I found is I wanted to be someone who was appreciative, someone who loved myself for who I was and everything that I brought to the table, someone who was compassionate, someone who could have empathy for where I was in my life and where my peers were, someone who was enthusiastic and not afraid, be excited about all the different things I could bring to the world, and someone who was creative and was willing to diversify my idea of who I was and what I could do so that I could be in a better place. And in all of that, I found that everything comes from nothing. And that's my idea worth spreading. Thank you.